Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, so today we're going to do something very colorful. My friend Melody from Melody's Coloring Cafe invited me to do a collaboration with her. Now she's already done the initial beginner's tutorial on doing this picture. I'm going to take it to a little bit more of an intermediate level. We're going to be doing the rainbow mushroom. Now, Melody did hers a couple of weeks ago, back in December, and it's just taken me a while to get this done. Well, I don't have to explain to you. It takes me a while to do everything. Before we start the mushroom, we need to go over a little bit of color theory, but I think this color theory is really going to help everybody because there's people out there who are going to screw this one up and have. You would think doing a rainbow is easy, but it isn't. You have to understand colors really well and the color wheel because if you deviate in the littlest way, you're going to get a big brown splotchy mess going across your page. I'm using my Stardewy pencils mostly because it's easy to explain using them, but in reality, it's probably easier to use Prismacolor than it is an oil pencil because it takes a lot of blending and the Prismacolors are built for that type of blending where the oil pencils really aren't, but I did the picture in uh, my Star Joys. It took me a little bit longer, but um, I did switch over to Prismacolor later on because I wanted to hurry it up. Okay. <laughs> in the picture that I did, I'm going to be doing grass also. Don't worry about it. I have a lesson coming up on grass and how to do that because a lot of people screw that one up too. And, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about this lesson that I'm giving you now for my beginners. I redo this lesson over in lesson nine on the Starjoy channel. So we're only up to like four as of um, today. So don't worry about it. If you don't understand it, you will when you get over to that channel if you're watching it. I'll leave a link for it in the description. And uh, so let's begin. This is on the intermediate level. Now we're going to be taking the rainbow. You would think red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, and indigo would be so easy just to blend right into each other. But it's not that easy. And there's a big reason why. Now I'm going to take three pencils. And again, for my newbies, I will go over this again. So we're going to take three primary colors. I'm going to show you the light bulbs are going to go off. I'm telling you. Everything equals brown mud. But it doesn't mean it's a pretty brown. So we're going to put brown right in the middle. If you mix red, yellow, and blue together you get mud and it's not pretty mud. It's ugh. you want a nice clean pictures. You want your colors to be clear, no matter what color you're using. You want a nice crisp, clear color. You don't want that muddy, yucky um, mess to come into your pictures. And it's so easy to happen. And it happens when you mix these three colors together. So now you're saying to yourself, well, I just won't mix those three things to color. And if I don't mix them together, we won't have mud. But it's a little harder than that. Okay, so let's take red and blue. Red and blue make violet. Okay, get out a violet pencil. And we're going to make violet. These two make that. If you then mix that violet with its opposite color, which is yellow, you are going to get mud. Why? Because red and blue made violet. There's red and blue in there, hidden in that little secret place. Violet and yellow incorporate really all of it. Now take that a little even further. 
blue and yellow make green. Mix that with your opposite color and you get mud brown. Why? Because you have yellow and blue, which makes green. So green has these two colors in it. Can't hide them. It's in it. Mix it with red and you get mud. Now again, you have orange. And again, stay with me, people. I know this is tough. <laughs> red and yellow make orange. Mix your orange with the opposite color you have with the blue. And what you're going to get is mud. So now you're thinking to yourself, well, now that's everything. I can't mix anything, but you can. So what we're going to do is to avoid all of this mess to making mud. So let's take the mushroom, okay? And I'm going to just draw a really quick mushroom. And it's going to have, we're not going to worry about the stem. We're worried about doing the rainbow on the mushroom. Now, I've seen um, newbie colorists do this. In fact, I just saw one this week, a newbie who was trying to do Melody's tutorial and completely failed at this and was completely clueless as to what happened. You need to start out with a pure red. If you start out with a red that is a red-orange, and I'm going to just make a quick rainbow here. Now, you don't have to start red at the top and go down. You can do it right in the middle. So here's a yellow. We're going to have an orange in between. <coughs> and a blue. Okay, and then a violet. So here we have all of this. If I start off with a red, and my red has orange in it, and my blue accidentally touches my, well, that one doesn't have red in it. I mean, that one doesn't have orange in it. I have color chili. Here's a red that would be a common one. Now, I know against this, it looks very orange, but when you're looking at it, so a lot of people may mistake this for red, but it's not. It's a red-orange, and it's marked red-orange on it for you, so you don't make this mistake. If you go to mix that red with a blue, say you're even using indigo or whatever, and you go to mix this together, you're mixing red and blue. And you're thinking to yourself, well, I just made mud. Because that's about just about the ugliest color that you can put down on your page. That kind of looks like a gigantic hairball. It's because you didn't use a pure red. You couldn't see that. So you might end up with something that looks like a big brown blobby splotch going across your rainbow. Blech. So that's the first thing, is you don't want those colors touching each other. <coughs> now, if you add in a green in there, and it comes in contact with red, you're going to get that same, uh, see, it's the same ugly color. That's what you want to avoid. But if you use your pure version, and they're all marked with a J, because I knew people were going to not be able to recognize it at the beginning, and then if it was mixed in with the regular analogous colors, you'd always have to be picking it out or you wouldn't exactly know. So that's why it's separate. All these jeweled colors are separated out. These are your pure colors. These are the ones that are not going to screw you up. So even if you have to start with the pure version of a color, it's okay. You can always cover it up. Now there's another thing that you can do. And this was a trick that I learned years and years ago from my one of my art teachers. Let's show you how to buffer. I want to take a uh, my red vi my red orange, okay, and I want to use my red orange, and say I want to bring it next to a blue. You may find that like on a strawberry, so don't think it's not an impossible color. You may be using the blue near the strawberry. You can. Well, you could take your red pencil, your pure red, 
and do your edges. The area where the two will meet. Now, it's perfectly okay to mix red into red-orange. That's, they're analogous of each other, and they'll blend beautifully with each other. Okay? But you can hide that blue. Now, this is a little bit dark. What? This is a little bit dark for, being, for doing this. I would probably use, let's get a nicer blue. So here I have a light blue. I want it to be mixing in with the orange, but I want it just to appear that it's mixing in with the orange. Mix it into that buffered color. Now, of course, I'm going very, very quick. You want that violet in between. Now you have a nice violet. And I'll, this is not the same as what you will find with, look at this. Look at the difference in color. I know it's kind of hard to see, but this is a clear violet and this is mud. So I will try to zoom in on it so you could see it properly. But that's what I mean by buffet color. So right now I'm going to do the demo for you so that I can, I don't, I'm not going to be speaking. So enjoy the demo and I will see you probably at the end of the video.
this point, I'm going to leave it for this video. I still want to do more on it, but I'm going to be doing a future tutorial coming up soon where I need ground cover, I need a rock, and I need plants. So this just worked out where it was perfect. I want to thank Melody for such a great inspiration. For the beginner that screwed up her colors, it's it'll get better. I promise you, once you learn how to blend properly and once you learn how different colors react with each other, you won't make that mistake again. So, guys, I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.